This is a museum of living plants, the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew in London. Every plant uses the carbohydrates it makes as an energy source to go about its planty business. And we animals who are ultimately parasites on the plants, we steal the carbohydrates so we can go about our business. In eating the plants and their fruits, we combine the carbohydrates with oxygen, which as a result of breathing, we've dissolved in our blood. From this chemical reaction, we extract the energy which makes us go. In the process, we exhale carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which the plants then use to make more carbohydrates. What a marvelous cooperative arrangement, plants and animals each using the other's waste gases, the whole cycle powered by abundant sunlight. But there would be carbon dioxide in the air, even if there were no animals. We need the plants much more than they need us. There are many family resemblances among the organisms of the Earth. Some are very apparent, such as uh, the use of the number five. Humans have five major bodily projections, one head, two arms, two legs. So do ducks, although the functions of their bodily projections are not quite the same. An octopus or a centipede has a different plan, and a being from another planet might be much stranger still. These family resemblances continue, and on a much deeper level, when we go to the molecular basis of life. There are tens of billions of different kinds of organic molecules, yet only about 50 of them are used in the essential machinery of life. The same 50 employed over and over again, ingenious for different functions in every living thing. And when we go to the very kernel of life on Earth, to the proteins that control cell chemistry, to the spiral or helix of the nucleic acids which carry the hereditary information, we find these molecules to be absolutely identical in all plants and animals of our planet.